So uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, as always, I have fun with Java. And I've read a blog. Uh, there are some video courses pre-recorded, and there are live workshops like this one. And um, so what I would like to start with is a Q&A, then some fun stuff would happen to me this week. So uh, I think it is uh, interesting, and this uh, fits well. This is the uh, second item here. And then um, why I still like MicroProfile in Jakarta E. I will hack something probably uh, just for fun and then QA again. So this is the idea. And actually, I have a lot to do, lots of projects. So if uh, you know, if it takes a little bit shorter, not, not a problem at all. Uh, um, yeah, Kai Uwe uh, is also a friend of the show. Hello, Kai. So I think what we can do is, I don't know what they remember Java 1. There was the uh, Birds of the Feather. It's more like you know informal session. So I think it would be nicer than this, right? Before I do the, exactly the same what I always do and uh, hack something and hope I will show you something new. It's always you know uh, to rem hard to remember what um, what I already did. So um, now two uh, two things. These two workshops were supposed to take place on Airport Munich, and Kai was already on Airport Munich as I remember. But because of pandemic, they are virtual. So uh, good and sad news. It was lots of fun at Airport Munich, but uh, since the pandemic, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, we have to have some fun, you know, online. Uh, and the first one is somehow related to this topic, and the next one is completely unrelated. Is you know how to remove all JavaScript frameworks with nothing with the uh, Java e uh, ja Jakarta e stick um, approach. Okay. And if you have any questions left, there's the AirHacks TV show. So uh, some people already attending this. So, um, and um, this is the last slide. So this was, you know, the formal part. Oh, so the last thing is that I found, you know, this meetup uh, AirHacks uh, useful. What I do is I announce, if I can, you know, conferences. Um, so if you if you like to see what I'm doing uh, on online conferences, then go there. There's a list of conferences. I try to maintain this somehow because it's easy to do. OK, cool. So now let's close the slides. And then uh, some prepared topics. So this is the AX TV. And one question, actually, uh, is this one. And uh, the story is, is, is funny. So um, someone approached me via email. Uh, actually, marketing department approached me via email whether I would like you know, to be a media sponsor, which I don't even know what it means. And I say, OK. I could, but <laughs> I'm not a publisher. And uh, they, uh, they, uh, and I just looked and now at the uh, at the logo and said, okay, somehow I know them. And uh, it was an old JDD uh, conference, or old is a co an older conference which I attended, you know, in 2009 and 2012. So I take a look, you know, I search in the emails and on on my machine, and I found, you know, JDD. So okay, interesting. And my I answer them, you know, look. I'm uh, I'm not a publisher, but uh, I am a developer. So I can attend as a, as a speaker, and uh, they say yes. So I attended, but during the search on my machine, I found the stuff I actually hacked, and not only that, there is a video recording of me, and with the title "Java a Future is Now," but is not evenly distributed yet, and this is seven years old video. So I look a little bit older than now. But uh, but I mean this is uh, what what we can do you now. Now we have technology advance, so we uh, are uh, we are looking younger and younger. But um, I, I had still no time to watch this, but I found the code, and I said, okay, the code is also interesting. I was really curious what I what I did seven years ago because you know it's a long 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 period of time, and as you probably know, you know since ten years, uh, people are, are, are telling us that uh, uh, that uh, EJBs are dead and Java is dead and everything is dead and and um, so I was curious what um, what happened then, and I have the source code. And the first idea is, you know, to walk through the source code I created. I have no idea what I what I thought about, but what is interesting, you know, um, how old Java six uh, source code looked like back then. I used NetBeans back then, and uh, the main main difference is that the you know the uh, the uh, the logo was glowing back then, and and now it is not glowing. So the um, now I have a same notebook without you know any visual visual effects. Okay, cool. Um, so let's take a look at the source code. Uh, I, I hope it's a good idea, right? So um, 
you like to see it or should I should we go interactive code review of my own stuff we, I wrote and try to port it to now? I think it could be fun idea, right? Because this is one of the reasons why I like Jakarta E. I don't have to rewrite any other day you know the app. Good idea, chat. Chat is lazy, I have to say, or overloaded. Could be also overloaded. No news are good news. Maybe there's some delay, I would say. This can also happen sometimes. So I, I assume you would like to see that, right? So um, let's try this. So uh, so for unknown reasons, I named the app Universe. No idea why. So and, uh, and I, I, I guess the theme of the conference was Java Universe. And uh, this is the code I wrote. And by the way, uh, we can take a look. Uh, yeah, it already was opened by, we already see 2012 and 2012. And if I go to sources, hopefully it is not touched by Visual Studio Code. It's 2012. So old, no, very old code. So now, start with the POM. As you can see, I used uh, NetBeans. So the first question is why I'm using Visual Studio Code and no more NetBeans. And the answer is because I do a lot of web work, and most of the you know uh, uh, developers I know, uh, they are also uh, using Visual Studio Code. It's like you know the the IDE of the web. So uh, for me, it would be hard you know to convince them to use NetBeans. So I use Visual Studio Code, and now Visual Studio Code is good enough for Java. So uh, I just use Visual Studio Code. But for uh, larger projects or for more complex projects, I still use NetBeans. Oh, perfect, wonder. Now, I look at my own Maven code and I say, this is crappy. Why I wrote this? Because if you if you take a look, it's 80 lines of code, strange plugins, and, and I say, okay, this is impossible that I was behind you know, this uh, this code. And then I watched you know, the first five, five minutes and I saw I used the NetBeans wizard back then. And um, and, and I really didn't like you know, this code because it would be simplified. And um, how, I mean, how it can be simplified in, we can delete <laughs> eighty percent of this, and it will still work. So, and um, and uh, to uh, let's do it. So now, what? Uh, how my code would look right now? This is my freshest uh, Maven archetype. Uh, set up Jakarta EE eight project, and now call it uh, Eclipse Booth EB. Uh, oh, we can even do Eclipse Java uh, J four K Booth. Then we have EJB. 20, uh, 2020. I mean, this looks nice. So now we have a project EJB 2020, which stands for uh, Eclipse. Oh, missed. Missed means I didn't want it to, to, to tell you the English word. Always the same mistake. Wrong folder. So now I'll do the same. And by the way, the setup Jakarta E project, it just invokes the archetype. So there is no magic. So I will show you in a second. Uh, and if we take a look uh, on that, it will probably or hopefully just invoke the archetype, which is already in GitHub checked in. And if you take a look on, on my blog, I announced it, I don't know, two months ago or something like that. So take a look on this. As you can see, it is just the archetype with a little bit of you know parameter magic, but uh, it is just invocation of the archetype. OK. Now we have the EJB 2020 project, which I would also like to open. And I just switch to EJB 2020 and open that. OK, there are uh, two modules, and I will tell you why. But uh, what I wanted actually to steal is this. This is the only thing I need, and I. Uh, would like to copy this over to my other project. And the other project is here. And where are the properties? They are on top, which I don't like. But let's do this. So now we have 11.11. Uh, 11. And uh, let's keep this for fun. And the first plugin, I don't even know why is there. The war plugin is even stranger. And the Maven dependency plugin, no idea what it does. So let's delete it. Now, uh, what remains is, uh, is nothing, how it should be, because we are in Jakarta E space. 
And uh, yeah, this is basically it. So now we ported the build system to 2020. So what it means is you have to delete 80% and now it becomes you know compatible. So now, final name, universe. I would like to do this otherwise. Otherwise, uh, it will append the snapshot 1.0 version, which is not, not really nice. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Uh, Java minus version, uh, JDK 11. Uh, let's be a little bit more ambitious. Java 15, okay. So uh, Maven clean install. And it is built. So I would expect in target universe work done. Okay, now we are in the booth and in the booth, how it works is I do something five minutes and I get no 15 minutes questions or questions now. And I can drink, you know, something, it's a tea. I have to write properly questions. No questions, of course not. Now, if we take a look, there is a, a comet, something what I did was a comet servlet. And what you see here, I try to uh, create an asynchronous API with servlets and I already used add inject seven years ago. And uh, now we could replace the servlet with JAXRS and um, async context, but I don't, don't would like to touch it right now, so we can walk, go through this. And by the way, fun fact, this A Bean here is my name, of course, Adam Bean. But uh, in my Eclipse days, if I use the Eclipse ID, so this is the Eclipse booth, so I can I can admit I also used Eclipse in the year 2000, around 2003. And this A Bean, e Eclipse always tried to correct this A, a Bean uh, to Alien because uh, you know there's just one B replaced with L, and this was alien. So this was nice touch from Eclipse IDE. So um, this is the only IDE which tried to do this. All others just ignoring the fact, not even Visual Studio Code, which actually is behind the scenes, the uh, Eclipse, Eclipse IDE. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the servlet. And uh, back then, what I remember, I was in projects where uh, there was a, a uh, they, they, uh, in one project in an insurance company, they had uh, lots of machines, so lots of servers, and uh, there, there was a host system, and they would try to implement something like WebSockets without WebSockets, so there's long polling. And uh, they always killed their own you know, socket server, and with this trick, and I remember Glassfish 3, we were actually able to, uh, to have, you know, we replace all the custom frameworks with one single instance, which was able to handle several hundreds or even thousand, I don't even remember, uh, uh, waiting requests because this doesn't block the threats, the, the threats. Because back then um, it was the Grizzly and it used on the Comet, this is the name Comet, was the, uh, was the, uh, the, the idea of, of long polling. Okay, now configurator, let's go class by class. So what the configurator does obviously, so I injected the uh, injection point, inject the injection point, injecting a string with the injection point produces from CDI. And obviously convention of a configuration, I try now to get the name of the class, the get name, and then I uh, say, okay, I could look it up in properties. So what we could do right now is in this old Java 6 code, we could replace that with microprofile config. So this uh, would be just add inject config property. And uh, back then there was no microprofile config. I actually ignored all the frameworks. This was my way to uh, configure all the old systems. And um, I also said, okay, what we could do, we could create a DB configurator, which extends the configurator. So it's a hierarchy. And with the specializes, actually interesting that I knew that seven years ago, with the specializes, I'm overriding you know, the, the, uh, the, the uh, default configuration here. And remember, it was seven years ago on stage, you know, with uh, I think JDK 1.6 and 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 NetBeans probably I don't know uh, six or seven something like this. 
Now, what is the environment? The environment uh, is just an EDAM production and test, which is uh, interesting. And um, this is actually a nice idea. I forgot about that. You can actually produce an, an enum and uh, and uh, and uh, of course say in which environment uh, I am. And uh, JSF Java Server Faces have the functionality that you can actually you know uh, say in which uh, environment or stage are you actually. And the conference was in Krakow. It's a Polish city. So and uh, this is a stateless EGB, so which is not not um, not available. <laughs> Living legend. Um, then I tell you something, Kai Uwe Pell. So this is a nicer story. So Kai Uwe Pell, so I know it for no for for uh, for years, and uh, I look at his uh, his Twitter avatar, and I say, "Are you a wizard? You look like a wizard." And he told me, "This is not a wizard. You know, I'm a fighter. So I'm a martial art uh, a fighter, and uh, for me it was a wizard. So if I'm a legend, a <laughs> legend or agent." You are you are a wizard, so um, or martial art uh, guy, and um, so what um, what um, what this happens? What 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 here happens is we have an EGB with at stateless, and um, this at injects injects the complex configuration which was produced by the other one, and we have a thread starter, and I I, I think I know what I wanted to do exactly. So this is uh, this was my way back then seven years ago to perform asynchronous actions. So um, I think it was before completable future, I, I would imagine. So uh, what happened then is I passed the runnable. I would, could execute the runnable in the context of the application server, and then I, I fired a CDA CDI event done. And after the done, for unknown reasons, I threw a runtime exception just for fun. And uh, I took a look at the code before the show here once and. Uh, what I, what I, what I, uh, why I did it is to explain you no know, the rollback because runtime exceptions they uh, initiate a rollback, and uh, and this is what I wanted to show. So you see, see the final result, not, not not all the commits. Okay, so this is basically and uh, and uh, there is a job listener as well, and this is and the entire thing is as you can see we have successful and failed transactions. One is after success and the other one after failure. And what I do here on window request, I get the async context and do something with it. Um, interesting why I do this. So I'm sending the out from the servlet. So this comet servlet sends an async context. Yes, uh, you can do this. So okay, I'm distributing you know, these requests. And my job listener listens to that and writes asynchronous, asynchronously something back. So right now the code would be not that different. It would be with uh, I know with Jaxor's resource and with a suspended and async context. Um, so what's interesting is, and I get a feedback all the time. So um, last year a company came to me after ten years and said, you know, we, we should you know modernize the code, and the code was already very modern. So there was uh, some minor tweaks, and we are ready to go. So the interesting part is that actually you could save a lots of money. Just by using Jakarta E and micro uh, micro profile <laughs> became the micro profile, but Jakarta E just by ignoring you know all the trends and sticking with your business logic. Because if you look at the code, I, I mean it's not a lot different to now. And you know to plot all the code here to now to 2020 would be you know a matter of minutes or hours. And a larger code base, I would say, is actually you don't have to port it at all. You can just use it, but you could still simplify that. Okay, what I also used were GSF, and GSF a little bit more controversial, but still, uh, in some startups, we are using still prime faces for back office applications. They are still great for productivity. So uh, for you know for for admin UIs, for for I don't know CRUD. I mean, you are still crazy fast if you can live you know with the look and feel. So if you have to tweak you know the user interface a lot, this probably won't work. But um, what you what you what is what you can do? You can just you know. You can uh, just take whatever Prime Faces gives you, and uh, and and create you know a, a default user interface. So and uh, the web app it was an uh, JSP, uh, but this JSP was always generated by NetBeans. It is just it was just there, and this is probably what I wrote on stage and I showed okay there is an expression language. 
So recently, I uh, did some. I wrote some code with uh, Quarkus and Mutiny, and it was similar. No template language, a template language, and as I said, JSF is still usable. It is not applicable to all use cases. You cannot just uh, create a great single page applications with JSF. They are just not suitable for that. Okay, I think we saw everything. So now go to the next stage. <laughs> so now, what is the uh, the the, the next stage. The next stage is so if we I show you the following uh, somewhere here we have the white flag and the white flag 21 become available I think yesterday or something like this uh, yes yesterday so of course uh, it would be nice if we could you know deploy the old code to yesterday's runtime and uh, so what I did is I downloaded OneFly and with a simple script, we just deletes the old one and creates the new one. Um, it installs WhiteFly 21 final. And then I would like to start the WhiteFly, of course, start WhiteFly as well. So, and now it started. And uh, what I would like to do is, um, I, I wrote a tool, forgot to, it is a very basic tool, it's called what? A watch and deploy and what it just does is this is for lazy developers on any change in the source code tree it just uh, performs maven clean install and copies the war because of the final name i always know uh, I, I can um I, I can pick you know from the artifact id the one name and just creates that by the way this could fail here because take a look what the artifact id is what is universe okay i was even you know uh Strict back then, so conventional configuration, universe, universe, universe. So, and uh, exactly what I uh, don't like is no, oh, this is what I would do differently. This is forbidden because what developers you know, really like is to name it differently. And if you uh, rename the, if you choose different names in the name and the artifact ID, you will find in your IDE different module name and different folder and different artifact ID. And this is just unnecessary complexity. By the way, this can be also deleted because I have no idea what it's doing. So, okay, now, um, I think now there is nothing else to delete, I hope. So now we are back, you know, to 2020, 30 lines of uh, Java EE are good enough. Okay, so now let's see. Uh, now I'm a little bit nervous. Just do this. And my watch, Okay, and this is a little bit annoying. So this what uses behind the scenes um, Maven and Beta, and this is not JDK 11 compatible. So I will probably ditch the dependency and rewrite it by myself. We find some time. Our crazy times a lot to do, but uh, if there are some, you know, uh, short vacations, I will do it. Okay, now uh, hopefully it deployed already. So let's see where is my white fly. White fly. Okay. So as you can see, it uh, deployed this universe war, no errors, and uh, it deployed thread starters and so forth. So now, so what it basically means is, um, let's see, if we go to the comet servlet, so this is comet servlet, but uh, this index is this JSF, so what it could actually do, we can just try whether it works, right? So just switch to here and say localhost, localhost, 8080. Okay, this is always good. And uh, universe, hello from database, which seems to work, uh, which is of course a lie. This database was the configurator, but still it works without anything. And the exceptions I got, as you can see, is um, model EGB and received done, this one. And this is the test I did with the, I guess, with the transactions, and this is the exception, runtime exception. So let's see what happened. So whether it works still correctly. So we had the job listener here, and oh, received done. So it works, so transaction after failure. So what it means is, if we change now the, uh, where was it? If we change now the thread start, I think, right? So this one, so I don't like the exception anymore, and now you see the what became active. The application 
eight years application is deployed and now it should still work so reload switch back to whitefly plus plus received it is working as you can see even the gsf are, are working flawlessly so i would say if you would like you know to earn some money money be a consultant which migrates you know from 10 years old applications to 2020 if you know they use you no know, jakarta e it's a it's a very good very good job so um so this is this really stunning that uh, i know you can just use an old jakarta e e6 application and still make it run today because you know many say okay this is not worth you know all the effort with standardization but it seems like um it is worth no the next one there is the still java 6 dependency let's modernize that so what I, I would like to do is i would like to where is my other visual studio code is here and i would like to see what happens if i just pick you know first this so just take the jakarta e8 and replace that so I'll just use that and uh just run the water again still works and uh let's see on so i hope this is still deployed and EG, hello egb from database so now what we can also do i could say okay what if we build a little bit create add a little bit micro profile to the mix and uh seems to work deployed no complaints okay cool then what i would like to do is the db configurator i actually don't like it so what i could do i can say okay add inject um add config property name equals uh message and default name value would be uh 2020 string message and from database plus 2020 so okay uh and this is so why this happens is because uh, Visual Studio Code and, and what tr both try to compile or build, and sometimes it breaks. So as you can see, it works. So what we did right now is, you know, we took the uh, 20 years, oh, 20, <laughs> eight years old application, um, then ported that, you know, first modernized Maven, then ported to JDK 11 or 15, actually runs on 15, then uh, used you know the yesterday whitefly started a you know, whitefly and then added micro profile and replaced the old java e code with micro profile so let's be even more brave oh this is uh, my my new code so okay this looks even nicer but uh yeah and take a look um we actually don't have any so the comment server is interesting uh, how to how we would rewrite this so actually we could do the same right now with now call it comet resource comet resource java and say you know path comet 2020 void this is important uh async hello and then i can say suspended async context context and then say uh context no async context uh async response response so and then response i could use the async context but it's from the server api 
uh, this is resume, you know, async in 2020. And then I can say this is at get. And basically, I could use, I could just, it, it is very similar code to, uh, to this. And uh, again, OK, recovered. So uh, now we have it. And comet 2020. So where is my browser? We go to localhost 8080 universe, universe. And oh, one work. You know why? Because I forgot the uh, resources, right? There was eight years ago, there were no resources. So I would like to steal it from here. Copy. So, and paste. Okay. And this is wrong. So I change package to PLS for Poland and JDD was the Java developer conference. Okay. By the way, do you have questions? Uh, we are at the booth. I, I would expect a little more interactivity. So uh, either we are 12 or 128. So it's uh, really hard to tell. But uh, yeah. Any questions? Hmm. I can say call to action. Let's see what happens if I push the button. Oh, no. Then it will get redirected to somewhere. We don't like to do this. Uh, ask a question or, uh, yeah. OK, so this was nothing useful. All buttons are not that nice as I thought. OK, now we have uh, the application hopefully deployed. Uh, let's see. Oh, so just do it again. And go to browser universe resources. Uh, comet 2020, and this is async in 2020. So this is the the major difference to to uh, 2012. Okay, so you, so we have to use the JackSource resource. Okay, and then the comet servlet explained, configurator explained what we could do right now is use micro profile config sources, for instance, and the uh, DB configurator. Um, yeah, we just uh, use something for micro profile and we combine you know the old code with new code. Environment provider is fine. And uh, good morning is the uh, stateless EGB. Okay, let's say uh, you would like to get rid of EGBs completely and you would like to uh, migrate this, for instance, to Quarkus uh, or, or Helidon. So, how to do that? Uh, usually, this uh, class I would call boundary. So what I tend to do is the following. So we say, I would like to, but this asynchronous won't work then, right? Uh, it's not asynchronous, so it will still work, okay. So um, what uh, we could do is, or my idea is to create a boundary file, which is going to be an kind of an interface because it's going to be a notation. And this annotation is going to be stereotype. And the uh, retention is going to be runtime. So I would like to keep the annotation in the, uh, the metadata in the bytecode. And then, and then um, target is going to be type. OK, and now I created my own, let's call it macro, because uh, it just expands everything. And uh, so, uh, and now I can say this is request scoped, request scoped, and if you can, transactional, for instance, transactional, no. And this transactional has similar semantics because the default transaction level is required which is very similar to EGB required. So this would be the migration to Quarkus, for instance, or a Helidon. Um, OK. Um, let's see whether it works, right? No, uh, we actually have to apply it. And this is Good Morning Krakow. 
and now we can use instead of this we can use that okay now let's see whether it actually is working so I already compiled. And by the way, what happens here, I'm deploying here to, uh, I think, Tommy. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Open Liberty. Uh, this is going to be at the um, Whitefly. And this is uh, Payara and Glassfish. And this is a Piranha Cloud, a very fresh, uh, small server, which is uh, really nice. And uh, yeah, this is the servers I usually deploy to all of them because they are mostly compatible. Mm -hmm. So where is my white fly? So this seems to be deployed. And let's see whether, whether it is working. So this seems to work. And the uh, universe EJB hello from database is also working. So now we can do a little more crazy things. So the get message, we can say, is it actually invoked? So let's put counted on it. And hopefully. It is activated in, I remember, I don't know, um, I remember Whitefly is something I have to explicitly activate. Hopefully it was not Matrix. Um, but let's see, it, uh, Whitefly, it has 9990 port is the admin port, which is actually right. It's a good idea to have a dedicated port, you know, for all the uh, metrics and health checks and so forth. So, and um, this is 990 and, uh, what I would like to do is to check whether the metrics are available. And they are. And then application is not available. And the reason is because I didn't call it the um, API after deployment. So call it again. And then reload that. And try with application. Still not available. Question is, is it actually deployed? As you can see, there is still something to do, minor things, right? We are not completely jobless. So this is now deployed. So now try to reload that. Okay. This is deployed. And this should be application. Hey, it works. So what we did now, we added to the old Jakarta e application uh, micro profile metrics. So we are now counting the invocations. And I think this was problem with my Firefox. So it's caching or whatever, because it already displays two. So it means the first time, yeah. Now questions. Luis Vandere, 2097, Kai Uwe, any questions? I'm just curious how many people are on my booth. Oh. A very good question. Uh, a perfect question, actually. If I had a T-shirt, I would send you, uh, Majid. The question is, what is your reason uh, to to co for combine, or what is your reason for combine Jakarta and MicroProfile? Is that because MicroProfile does not support EGBs? Um, excellent question. So, um, now, micro profile so the root answer is uh, they are always combined and if you take a look on that so uh, this is the base layer and it comes from jakarta e8 so you, we always have a part of jakarta e8 or java e8 and the top two layers is micro profile so we have health we have json web token metrics fault torrents open tracing open api rest client and config so um, actually, I never used just micro profile only project. I always used to know more than that. For instance, bin validation, right? It's not a part of micro profile. It's part of Jakarta E. Uh, JMS. Uh, sometimes we have to, you know, to talk to AMQP or 
or whatever, or MQ series. So you pick GMS. And uh, if go to my podcast, EHEX-FM. Uh, so uh, I will, in a few weeks, uh, uh, um, publish an episode about you know, GMS in the cloud. So um, GMS, you have to use Jakarta E. And uh, WebSockets, not a part of MicroProfile. So I, I would say it is almost impossible to use you know, MicroProfile in larger projects without Jakarta E. And because the runtimes are so small, as you can see, I just downloaded the uh, Whitefly actually today and uh, extracted for you and, and, and started that and hope that it will work, which, which it does. So uh, this is why I always use both. And in the case of Quarkus, for instance, so I add first all the small micro microprofile APIs, and then if I need, I add you know WebSockets, servlets from Undertow uh, on top of that if we need it in projects. But we mostly need it. For instance, tomorrow I spend some time in project with Kafka, and uh, and actually a crazy complex project, and we are going to use probably Quarkus. And the problem is they there will be a huge huge uploads. And we have to deal and parse them. So this is the challenge. So um, we will try with JAXRS, but uh, maybe if now if this fails, we have more control with servlets you know, about the uh, upload. So more bare metal. So probably we'll you know, take a look or on servlets or something else. But uh, why not? Okay. Uh, exactly. Wonder I say is JPA Java Persistence API. Of course, if you forgot about that. So if you uh, if you uh, know. Even you know the modern API from Quarkus called Panache is based on JPA. So if you if you dig you know two two classes higher, it, it it extends from Panache entity. Click on it and you will immediately see Entity Manager. So you always will have to use both. This is the truth. And the, you know the whole discussion, microprofile or not, I don't even understand. And uh, actually, uh, I get uh, at the Airhex TV, I got lots of questions regarding. Um, What's uh, my opinion about Whitefly sm uh, s small, <laughs> Whitefly Swarm, and uh, Thorntail and Pyra Micro? And I say, okay, I don't even understand that. Why I should use it, right? Because you know the the um, application server runtimes are small enough, so there is no reason to be even smaller. So that's yeah. Except Quarkus or Helidon, they are not only smaller; they are a lot smaller. So. Uh, magic and, and EJBs actually I could get rid of EJBs because for instance on, on Quarkus, Quarkus does not uh, Quarkus is working without reflection. So uh, you know the overhead of, of of CDI, the overhead of CDI could be uh, could be it's not an issue on, on Quarkus because what was the overhead? The overhead was that on every request, the whole you know all all the the entire object tree was injected over and over again, which took some time. And um, and um, and with Quarkus, there is no reflection, so it just generates its bytecode. So the request scope is just you know a little bit slower. So I think not measurably sw uh, uh, slower than than a single. Thing. So uh, I think EJB is important. Jakarta is spec that can be supported by MicroProfile as well. True. So what I really miss is pooling, for instance. So on that. Um, I just revealed to you because there are no private meeting. But uh, if you um, GitHub, Alan Bean, micro profile training, I think. Right. So what I did, I, I, I created actually, um, um, th this is a part. The code is completely free. You can just check it out. And uh, this is part of a, a video. Um, video course and I created an app it's actually a block app and one point of time I will replace my block with this and uh, what I did is um, th there were two microservices one is content and the other one is the renderer and the renderer uses Graal VM and uh, JavaScript to render this and the Graal VM you know the initialization is heavy and uh, what I did back then I use EJBs so what I would do is I would initialize uh, one runtime per EJB, so one Graal VM runtime per EJB. And because of the pooling, it would be beautifully and very elegantly solved because then I could you know five JavaScript runtimes and you could execute them concurrently. And this is actually how it is documented in Graal VM, how to deal with J J concurrent access to the JavaScript. With CDI, it is harder because no pooling. So I will have to implement pooling by myself if I do it or do something else. 
support. Um, so if you, you know integrated, for instance, um, languages, I did, did it a lot with Nashorn back then or Groovy. Um, then with EJPs were really beautiful because what you could do is in post construct, you know, you can initialize the entire runtime, and then you say I have ten of the EJPs in pool, and uh, the runtime didn't have to be you no know, reinitialized; it was just there. And in uh, CDI, you have the problem with request scoped; it is initialized over and over again. With application scope, there's one singleton, so everyone access that, and which is uh, uh, not good for uh, for concurrency. And there are no other scope. Conversation scope could work, but this is uh, hard to get on, on the backend. Actually, conversation scope could, could I could experiment with, but I will probably do just experiment something with uh, bulkheads, for instance, and uh, fault tolerance. Kai, exactly. You are right. Nice. So, uh, and, and if you this, and by the way, this application, I got uh, lots of questions regarding. Uh, regarding boundary control entity and this is actually implemented that way in boundary control entity posts and boundary control entity okay so now this was one you know remaining remaining killer feature of ejb's the pooling is not available in cdi and uh, what we used what i used a pooling a lot in more serious project was throttling so what we could do we could say you know max pool size this can be solved right now with bulkhead annotation and micro profile, I can say, you know, no more than five. And this is more than this, you know, fall back to another method. So this is somehow solved. And this, this nice story is right now, uh, you could, uh, you would get Prometheus matrix, for instance, and you could raise alerts. Back then, we used um, a project, I just Adam Bean Lightfish. For Payara, I wrote on this project, still operational, but uh, what it did is it just, yeah, paranormal activity, of course. So what it did is it, um, oh, the homepage is still there. It just connected via JMX and pulled all the dependencies and had a nice uh, visualization monitor. And uh, now I don't have to do it because with uh, no micro profile matrix, I get all the metrics for free. Okay, cool. Okay, where we were, uh, uh, oh, the question was, you know, micro profile in Jakarta E and uh, when to use what? And now another reason. If we take a look on, um, on uh, the release cycle of Jakarta E is slow. I don't know, uh, every two years or one year happens something. And um, for me, I, I would say it's perfect. So the question is, no, if you take a look at the code of 2012 I wrote back then the question is how much can we improve so what is lacking so this is the question of course we could release a you note know, twice a day a new spec but what we can actually contribute right and uh, what I what I what I like to compare I thought about that because I, I think it's the same problem like you know if you have something a, a major product product which is uh, available for 10 years or uh, Jakarta is available for 20 years so the question is you no know, there's innovation, but the innovation is different if it if it lasts for 20 years. Let's take, for instance, an iPhone. The iPhone, I think it was released in 2007, right? Or 2008, there were 12 or 13 years. So, and I would argue that uh, I think yesterday a new iPhone came out. It's no more that revolutionary, right? So if you come, the first iPhone was crazy. The second was, uh, okay, was an uh, improvement. Then was this 3G, which is even better because a little bit faster, but then there was the iPhone 4, and now the iPhone, whatever it was, 12, I think it looks very like the 4. So, and, and of course, it is everything faster, but it's not like complete revolution. And um, what I remember is, you know, the people back then, they spent you know, nights on streets, you know, to get the iPhone. I don't think it happens uh, now. <laughs> a little bit uh, problematic with, you know, with the pandemic, but, um, but uh, I think it's just, you know, it's just small iterations. And um, it's the same in Jakarta E. And, um, or, or a car, you know, if a new car comes out, and let's say, I don't know, we have, an, let's say, a Ford, a new release of a, of a, how to call it, of a model. It's not like it is no complete revolution. This is just, you know, minor tweaks, you know, the lights look a little bit different, and probably the engine is, you know, a little bit more efficient, but it's not like everyone 
would like to have the absolutely new car. So what's different is electric cars. Why? Because they are new. And if something comes new, there's complete new opportunity for innovation and there are crazy ideas, right? Now in uh, on the um, iPhone market or um, smartphone market, if you think about that, the folding phones, this is where innovation happens, crazy ideas. You know, they are folding back and forth and, and, and there's not even a problem, but people try to find solution for a folding phone. So, and this is why, you know, the innovation happens faster in folding space because it's, you know, a new area and, and don't expect, you know, uh, a, a, a brutal innovation in a smartphone space. What uh, can happen, of course, they, they are wearables like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, watches, this is where uh, innovation can happen because new. So now back to, to Jakarta E. If you take a look at Jakarta E, uh, I mean, most of the specs are really solid as a CDI, what they can improve. I mean, this is already great, right? So um, EJBs could be, there are some ideas to improve EJBs, but uh, I would say the innovation would be to 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 you know, eliminate some specs and deprecate old specs like soap and stuff like that in my eyes because we don't need them anymore. And make it um, align, you know, these this specifications, or make it more, even more convenient for developers. Now, micro profile is completely different. If you take a look, why micro profile releases so fast? C N C F is because, in my opinion, because of this. What C N C F is is something like JCP, but for everyone. So Kubernetes driven, you know, how to call it specs. If we take a look at the projects here. Yeah, graduated projects. Container D is abstraction of Docker. We have a core DNS, okay, this is uh, Envoy is like a uh, router or, but Envoy, this is the discussion now, uh, Envoy, Istio is different, uh, different, uh, how to call it, uh, foundation. But Envoy, um, what uh, the question is, you know, fault tolerance, where have, who is in charge, who is in charge now of the circuit breakers and, and timeouts? Is it, is it Envoy? Or is it more, you know, microprofile, for instance? So it's a, a microprofile can be influenced by this spec. Fluent D is like shipping, you know, back and forth. Logs, uh, Harbor is a nice registry. Oh. Um, but Jaeger, oh man. Helm is like a nice installer for Kubernetes, but Jaeger, um, let's open the Jaeger. Jaeger is relevant. It actually uses it in the uh, video course because what Jaeger does is it aggregates spans. And what span, spans are, they are traces which are coming from different microservices. And they are aggregated here. What you get at the end of the day, you get something like a sequence diagram where you see which service executed what and what was the latency you know, between. So in the Jaeger, it's, a, it's, an, it's a, almost a standard. And if this changes, Micro profile we have to know also to change the spec because uh, it is outside of the control of Java people, right? So um, this is why I would say the life cycle of micro profile is completely different to the life cycle of of Jakarta E because Jakarta is more you know iterative Java approach and micro profile is influenced by all the specs which are not necessarily even written in Java. I think Jaeger is written in Go. Okay, so we have here the uh, different projects. So we have again the uh, uh, Jaeger Kubernetes. For instance, liveness and readiness probes were heavily in influenced by Kubernetes. And uh, also the behavior, what I remember at the beginning of micro profile is the server was up and this was healthy, but the um, app was not deployed yet. And this you know, was not that good for many uh, cloud native apps. And they changed that because you know the Expected behavior of Kubernetes is different. Um, Prometheus. So Prometheus is responsible for um, for gathering the metrics, and Prometheus is a product which which uh, from 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 which a spec happened called uh, uh, called Open Telemetry, and the Open Telemetry spec what uh, what it does it actually influences uh, micro profile metrics. So you saw you now this strange format I, I presented you. Is actually the Prometheus format. So uh, what it means is, if uh, the open metrics or open uh, telemetry changes, micro profile will also have to change. Otherwise, you know, this is would not compatible with uh, with the uh, cloud. So uh, there is uh, Vitesse is uh, MySQL cluster database, uh, but uh, this is a key value database, and Rook is a, I think file system. 
Uh, yeah, native storage, and uh, I would say um, it is not, you know, that strange that MicroProfile will support in future um, di direct access to file system. Well, why not? We could inject, you know, a folder and just use it as a cloud native storage. It becomes, you know, this already now we can attach to you no know, folders through uh, Kubernetes and and make it persistent. So this is why I believe, and um, and by the way, this open telemetry. This is. Uh, Open metrics. These are the specs uh, I'm talking about. Yeah, open metrics, and of course, uh, open API. Open API is a spec which has nothing to do, you know, with JCP or Java. It's an open spec, a spec, uh, and uh, it it was uh, this is abstraction from from Swagger. It's also well supported by MicroProfile. So and because MicroProfile, you know, is selected Java, Java binding to this uh, specs, um, MicroProfile has to iterate faster. So this is my personal opinion. Okay. So we have at fifty percent. So questions now from from you. Agree on don or not agree? Huh. Watch this, what I can do. What I'm doing right now, I'm creating a poll for you. Okay, you see how interactive am I? Am alone here without moderator? I don't even know whether I'm supposed you know, to talk for, through the booth because there was no one. Usually there are people in the green room, and I was completely alone. So I do, did whatever uh, whatever was necessary to meet you, but uh, I have no idea whether I'm in the right conference even. Right? So two people are agreeing, so which is uh, nice. So um, um, questions. Please ask question or everything is crystal clear. Otherwise, you know what I can do. I can talk, you know, forever about the theory. What will happen is if you don't ask me any questions, I will make it a little bit shorter, half an hour, and then I will just go to sleep. This would be my strategy. Okay, we have now the um, the Open API. Open Metrics, Open Telemetry, Jaeger, and Rook, and the Cloud Native Foundation. Okay, now the session still. If you like to see Java future is now, but it's not even distributed yet. Uh, eight years old. It was in at the conference in October, and this is uh, 2013. It was published two months later. Okay, MicroProfile. We had it, and by the way, MicroProfile. So what's interesting in MicroProfile space is the following. So we have Smorai. And what Smorai is a kind of, I would almost call it a reference implementation. It is not, but I mean, it is used a lot. And uh, what I did with that already, I, I patched old JBoss EAPs to, uh, to, to be MicroProfile compatible because they are lagging a little bit. So the Whitefly is newer than this. And, um, and uh, now, uh, actually, Quarkus uses a lot of Smorai. And if we take a look at the projects, so as you can see, there's a CDI JAX or JSON B and so forth, config, fall torrents, health, and so forth. So this is like you know the the umbrella spec. And uh, what's new on the horizon is a graph graph cool, 
reactive stream operators, reactive messaging, and propagation. Uh, Luis asked me, why do you choose to use text files instead of database on the block pad? Uh, very good question, Luis. And uh, my current uh, block engine is uh, Apache Roller, and it is uh, based on, it uses database, JDBC database. And this is, um, I started, I think, with Derby, and then, no, it's, huh. Now it's hypersonic, but I started with Derby, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, the block is also even older. It's uh, 2006, right? It's 14 years old, and all the entries are still there. And the problem at the beginning with my Lightfish, I performed some some uh, stress tests all the time. And now um, I was too lazy to create another instance of the database and um, and use my block database for that, and then it became corrupt. So I found a bug in Hypersonic back then, and, uh, and then... Um, Try, I, I was able to fix that, but uh, since then I said, okay, it's not really a good idea to you know to 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 have a block with um, with JDBC, and it's not necessary. So what I did with the micro profile, I said, okay, uh, with JSOND is just enough. Why not to store you know the uh, block entries as JSON? Uh, I can then edit that. Even if it becomes corrupt, I can just uh, use Git for that, and actually. What I also have, I have some, you know, uh, projects which uh, personal tools, which, uh, for instance, they manage the uh, my workshops, the pages, you know, announcements and so forth. And this works very similar. So I have the JSON files. The cool story is I maintain everything in Git. So what my block engine will do is on every new post, it will commit the entire thing to Git repository. So I have my safety and and it will never become corrupt. So this is actually the reason. So I have uh, two reasons to that. And if you take a look at the implementation, this is not that hard. So the block pad, uh, I mean, it's just simple file access. Uh, this is, I think, two classes or something like this. So it was very, very simple. And uh, what I also thought is I can play a little bit more with that. And for instance, can use Kafka just for fun and store all the block entries in Kafka in the history back and forth. And this is always better if you have a JSON in the file. That's the reason. And um, yeah, and uh, I use database a lot, so nothing new. So I play a little bit with files. And also, if I would, for instance, I could now take an you know, OD block pad and put it to, on Kubernetes or even serverless. But if, if you would like to have persistence in the cloud, what you usually need is kind of a folder because Kubernetes attaches the persistence via folder, via path, persistence volume claim, persistent volume claims, this is the name. And um, and uh, this is just uh, easier with a file. So that that that's the reason. So I had uh, concrete reasons. I actually misused <laughs> the uh, workshop, the micro profile training workshop, to implement uh, block engine for me. And um, unfortunately, and in May I was I, I'm actually 90% done, and I could publish the block engine. But now is, I'm overwhelmed with micro profile in Jakarta projects uh, again for real clients. So my block engine has to wait. So this this was not planned as 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 it happened. I thought, you know, Corona was going to be more quiet, but what happens is also my observation. If crisis happens, it, uh, this was 2008, the same, and uh, 2013, I think, was a little bit more quiet, uh, everyone would like to have standards again. So people remember, hey, standards are not that bad, you know, com small companies can die, and what do we do with the software? And uh, standard is standard, because I can see, as, as you saw, you know, it uh, works for ages. Okay, thank you, Luis. Thank you for the questions. And um, and by the way, I think Luis, you saw the course because he found you know that I mistakenly uploaded a video twice. So Luis helped me you know to to find uh, my management mistakes on the course. So thank you for that again. Um, cool. Any other questions? No. So this is the Smorai story. We had the uh, micro profile with all the specs. Oh, what I appreciate the micro profile as well, if you go to more information, you are immediately here with the you know nice post from John Klingen, uh, uh, spec HTML. So you click on the HTML and you have the entire spec. So this is even easier to access than you know the at the Java E days, the JCP, because I had you know to always to check the box. I'm 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 happy with the licenses, license agreements, and now I can just get it directly. 
And um, yeah, this is basically the link to the specs, to the health, and I can go to the to the uh, health. Exactly. Presses. And um, yeah. And you can get the specs as as, uh, as uh, HTML or PDF. So we have that micro profile. And now Jakarta. So Jakarta is a similar story. So uh, if we take a look what it is. So this is, uh, and this is now the first button specifications. And I have my specs. So if you walk through the specs, Jakarta platform is everything. It just describes you now what comprises Jakarta web profile. I never used that. I have to admit this is like a stripped down Jakarta in the hope it is going to be even leaner, as you already saw. The Wi-Fi fool is uh, already very small, so I mean, uh, who cares about that? So if we need something leaner than the truly leaner, and uh, for instance, Quarkus or Helidon, they are just half of the size of, of a typical application server, and uh, if you use Graal, it's even smaller. Then Jakarta activation is more or less uh, like for emails. So if you send something with attachments, um, MIME types, then you need the activations to know to 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 find what to do with the type. Um, annotations, I believe, is principal. For instance, something like this, um, and uh, post construct and pre destroy. Authentication authorization is clear. Batch is lesser used. I have to admit, I never used the batch, and I don't like also the package structure. There's lots of impulse there <laughs> for no reasons. But um, yeah, um, but uh, batch would be useful if you have more heavier workloads. Where uh, in batch you can specify everything also as XML, so you can say, you know, do this and this and this. Um, I would say. I, I'm, I'm not used batch a lot, and uh, recently we used uh, just a no-stock application server with complete every future and was good enough. Um, so I wonder, ask me if you had to implement batch-like behavior, item reader, process of writer, microprofile. Would uh, what would you do? Uh, there is an interesting LRA, LRA long-running actions spec. So I would look at that first, whether it's helpful or not then uh, use uh, fault torrents with uh, bulkheads because you get asynchronous and bulkhead for that. And if you would use uh, Quarkus and Microprofile, what I, for instance, the uh, uh, recently, actually this page, Airhex FM, I ported actually this weekend, this Airhex FM, this is my podcast, and Airhex uh, TV for sure. So all you know the past shows here, um, they are uh, pulled from YouTube via the API and generated. This is actually created in a batch process. So this is with Quarkus. It just wakes up, does something, and goes to sleep. So it was the easiest possible thing. So um, you could have, you know, like batch processing where, where um, item reader process of writer, what you can do is uh, reactive messaging. So if you have stream of events, you know, just processing them as they come in. So this is one for micro profile. Reactive messaging is the name of this pack. And how we'll do this work is you have one uh, emitter, and you can just you know write stuff to the emitter, and then the processor will pick it up, and the process will be one method with annotation incoming, and this method will re read it, and then um, and then you can process that. You know the, the question is, is your batch job you know just waking up once a day and do something, or is con constant stream of actions? Um, so yeah, but um, I, I probably wouldn't use batch because for me it is like I'm okay. I would use batch if my application would be batch only. But usually batch was just a site, so we didn't. It was not the main purpose of the projects to provide batch functionality. Rather than we had, we had to do you know some batch processing as well and processing data from DB. Okay, this is actually. Cool, uh, uh, cool question. Um, so, what if, what you could do if you have, for instance, a uh, database? Let's talk crazy because it should be fun, right? So, uh, the most unconventional way, or or the most the the most interesting way of processing data from database, you could actually use Dbzoom. And what Dbzoom is, it creates every insert or it reacts to all changes in database or all transactions in database creates uh, uh, events from that and usually Kafka events. And then you are already integrated because the events are persistent. So you have a stream of, in a topic, you have a stream of events which happen in the database. And then you can map just, you know, um, 
small ry reactive reactive messaging for instance so and uh this is this is this is true but this is not this what i wanted to show you this is yeah and we have already different connectors and uh, they are so how this would work is here incoming somewhere incoming small ry incoming outgoing this is two annotations i'm searching for to give you an an example and this is kafka but it does matter as everywhere is the same programming model this would be like this incoming prices and you know this would be, this could be a pojo and then you get all the events uh from the database or change the database here and if you put outgoing and it's not void then you have to transformation logic and this will be one processor for instance it doesn't have to be kafka it can be gms or whatever so uh but uh this is just the the example what I found first, and this is actually compelling, right? Because you have incoming, outgoing, you can do whatever like, and you can map in the configuration. So in this particular case, it's more like Kafka, but it could be Camel, AMQP, JMS, MQTT, or HTTP, and HTTP is push HTTP. So it will read the message and push it to a different server. Okay, so what I'm telling you now should be fun. We are no innovation booth, just no crazy things. Of course, you could pull the database. But if you pull the database, you have the problem that some events can get lost. Because what can happen is that someone writes to a database, to the table, then deletes and writes again, and this gets lost. Okay, just good ideas or crazy ideas. We did it in one project where there's one critical database, and we are not allowed to interact with the database. So we used Debezium, you know, to pull data from the database, wrote everything to our Postgres. And we could do whatever we liked in the Postgres, for instance. Right? So interesting one. So I, I mean, for speci specific cases, this is great. But um, yeah, but still, you know, with the batch processing is more. Um, you, I think you have to define a workspace and they define in XML. You know, the the entire batch processing. Um, how to call it flow or I forgot how it's called. And uh, the main the main um, feature of batch processing was that it knows it was transactional and persistent so it remembered what happened but this is also persistent right if this is already in kafka you can you can go back and forth and nothing get lost so but you have to operate kafka this is the next problem right so you have to to, to care about brokers and zookeepers and but um if your company already runs kafka then use it if you have to run it then re either have fun, read, of lo uh, read a lot of documentation and run it, or, or if you don't like such fun, then, you know, uh, use something else and, and uh, have, you know, good sleep. Or use Manage Kafka, so uh, use, you know, Confluent Cloud to get Manage Kafka. Okay, cool. Small Rye Reactive Messaging, nice one. And GMS 2.0 from Jakarta E, also nice. So it's not like, you know, this is uh, preferred, it's just uh, also nice and modern API with uh, two lines of code you can send a message okay so i actually forgot what i wanted to do but it uh, doesn't matter uh Divisium. okay so uh these specifications exactly so jakarta batch ah this is what i wanted to do concurrency still usable and not usable still really useful so what you can do with jakarta uh, concurrency you can inject executor service it's called managed executor service and then you are concurrent and you can replace that with micro profile asynchronous as well. So Jakarta connectors, less uh, in use right now. I use them a lot, and this is uh, one of the best ways to uh, to use uh, you know, how to call it the best ways to um, integrate, you know, with something incompatible. And I think connectors with the Z, I hope, is still around connectors, lmb.com, yes. So uh, I think it is as old as the 2012 stuff. So let's see, eight years ago, exactly. So, um, but what this is, this is a transactional connector which writes to files. So I could actually use this in, uh, in my block as well. And uh, you could, you know, 
um, I just used this resource bucket store. And behind the scenes, the bucket store was implemented that way that on commit it wrote to a file and it rolled back, it forgot you know, the contents. Um, not perfect, but uh, fact actually good enough. And um, so now the connectors are less, not that important anymore because you can integrate via REST usually really well or uh, with Kafka or JMS. So there is no need to have like a binary integration with Java, right? So, um, so this is lesser. Less interesting than a few years ago. So then we have uh, Jakarta CDI. So you know that Jakarta debugging support for other languages. So um, I have no idea what it is, I have to admit. So I'm an Eclipse booth by, sorry, I don't know what it actually does. But uh, what I remember is that, uh, wait, wait, wait a second, we have enough time. You have no questions. So let's see what it does. So there's even milestone to zero. Let's see what it do. And Now, oh, it's a recent one. What is the gist of the? Oh, uh, it's interesting. What I ask myself: Why this is in Jakarta? E because it looks for me more like J Java stuff. It's just, uh, yeah. This is the, a good question to you now. You have 128 people. Why this is not a part of Java SE rather than of Java Carta E? This would be actually an interesting, I see actually no correlation with Jakarta, right? Just debugging spec, very low level one. SMAP syntax. Okay, this is something we have to know to evaluate, like no X files, why we have Jakarta debugging support for other languages in Jakarta E. Uh, oh, this is this uh, CDI, and this is what uh, Rod Johnson invented with uh, at inject. This was one of the you know fastest fast uh, fastest uh, specs in the. So this is the uh, JCP.org, the 330, I think. Dependence injection for Java by Rod Johnson, Bob Lee in 2009. And this is like the add inject in Singleton. So. Specifications, this is. So. Um, Jakarta deployment, I think, is deprecated. This deployment, uh, Jakarta Enterprise Beans, we talk about that. Web services, I would say, SOAP is out. I think it should we deprecate this as soon as possible. Jakarta expression language is actually very interesting. So um, if you search for Jakarta expression language and my name, you will find some YouTube, I hope, um, some YouTube uh, sessions or some code snippets. What I did with that is it is actually an expression language which even supports lambdas. So it's not that common, but uh, it's a really interesting specification. Interceptors, clear. I mean, what they do, you can intercept methods. JSON binding and JSONP. So this is more like JPA and this is more like hash map, mail, manage beans, management, I think is also deprecated, GMS. MVC is interesting because um, what I see a lot is server-side rendering, and there is no reason not to do it in Java. I would say uh, MVC could uh, take take off a little bit more. And um, if you the uh, I forgot actually the new main service is I think it's called Hey or Hello from the uh, uh, Bootcamp. It's the name Bootcamp, no Bootcamp, Basecamp, Basecamp people. Which uh, who actually created the Ruby on Rails, and this Hey app, um, it uses a actually interesting uh, interesting uh, web architecture. It has um, HTML pages, and uh, with very little uh, uh, with very little JavaScript, and everything is actually rendered on the server. And for such a thing, Jakarta MVC is just perfect, or even J JSP. So uh, I would say Java server pages are widely underestimated. If you are disciplined and don't write you no know, crazy code inside a template. Still, still great. Jakarta NoSQL, of course, no access to, uh, to uh, NoSQL databases, JPA, 
JAXRS, security, JSF, still great. Jakarta server pages, uh, at JSPs, server faces, and yeah. Serverless, of course, uh, SOAP, we don't need SOAP with attachments or without. GSTL, I, I think we can also deprecate that. Transactions, uh, important web service metadata, I think could be duplicated. WebSockets, XML bindings, uh, JAXP, actually, useful. I would say we don't need so, but you know, reading and writing XML is not as bad, way better than YAML, right? Uh, XML registries, remove it. Uh, this is duplicated anyway, I think, and this is duplicated and duplicated. So this is all the specs uh, we went through. And now about the runtimes. So what we have here, we have um, Whitefly 21, great. Apache Tommy, still great and very small. So if you search you know, for capable Jakarta runtime, Apache Tommy is way to go. So Payara released, I think, today a new platform. So let's see, uh, Payara server. And uh, Payara 5 data, and there is somewhere is here. Payara server download. And there is Payara platform community. And still the Para server community is the always the full one. And we have the 5 2025, and I'm just searching for the date. I think 14th October is today. We have new version of Payara. So I would say community really vibrant. So yesterday we got white Whitefly, today Payara. And this is the uh, full one. So um then Open Liberty, very great and small server. And this is, um, uh, um, they also improved, you know, the, because as I started with Open Liberty, I always had to you know the modules manually, and this was, uh, I would say, painful. But right now, um, if we say get Open Liberty and search for download somewhere here, you get prepackaged Open Liberty, and you can have it with micro profile zip. Or uh, on what I tend to do is you know to get everything, of course, because it's small enough. But in the workshop micro profile training, I used this one. So what I did actually, I think I started with Open Liberty, then migrated to Whitefly, then migrated to Payara. And what I didn't use is Helidon or or, or Quarkus because I wanted you know to use the old runtimes. But um, I will probably extend the course a little bit and and migrate it to Quarkus and Helidon as well. Okay. This is about Open Liberty, and um, if you would like to try that out, so use you know the uh, Jakarta E download just Jakarta E or all features because you get micro profile as well. And what uh, Open Liberty is really great if you change the configuration, it reloads itself on the fly, so it is a very small and lean server. So now, this is cool actually. This is Piranha Cloud. It's a, a, a new server, um, and uh, if you would like to to hear what's behind. Hexfm, and if you search for Piranha, Piranha, you will find the uh, episode with Arian Times about Piranha Cloud, and what is what is the history behind uh, Piranha Cloud. So if you would like to hear what's behind, listen to this. Very interesting runtime. This is heavily based on Maven, so really fresh ideas, and they are working um, actually before the show. Accidentally, I got an email from uh, from 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 Arian, and he told me that uh, they they are working on TCK and uh, server support, and the server support is really hard because the spec is big. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, Piranha Cloud. Then we have Cumulus, and uh, at the Airhex um, Live, there were attendees from uh, Slovenia, I think, and they had huge projects and they are based on cumulus so this cumulus is um is big in slovenia it's lesser known in germany i would say but uh i take a look at them they also look great actually the entire server and uh it is a you can see a very recent uh micro profile runtime then what we also get jakarta e runtimes on top of them i never used a pusik fujitsu we have uh the jus i heard a lot about the jus tmax then we have Primeton, never heard about that. Fujitsu, I heard about them. And uh, 
I think even Fujitsu asked me whether they can use parts of the my very first book, Enterprise Java Frameworks, and I said just yes, uh, without knowing what happened with that. Then uh, Wisely, of course. But uh, Pusik never heard about this, and never heard about uh, Prime Prime Ton, and 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 Jus. And so, uh, what it means is we have a lot going on here, and this is why my clients actually like it uh, because um, it is very unlikely that all these products will just stop, you know, working. So um, there's one spec you can work against, you can develop against the spec. This is what I tried, you know, to show you at the beginning of the show that uh, what I wrote eight years ago, now in 10 minutes, we can port to modern runtime. And if I would use no crazy dependencies, like, I don't know, Lombok and whatever, I, I'm not so sure whether it would be that easy, you know, to port it to, to this or, Back then, there was JDOM, I remember, you know, XML parsers. If I would use all the crazy stuff, I'm pretty sure some of the dependencies wouldn't be even available in, in Maven repository because uh, focus on 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 on, uh, on the thin wars and the Java E, it just worked. And by the way, this is what I do you know in my projects all the time. So we try to minimize dependencies. Okay. These are the uh, runtimes, and we also had the uh, Payara, and what will happen, of course, towards end of the year, we get Jakarta 9 with the new namespace with Jakarta dot, which I think is a good thing because um, because there's a clear distinction, you know, the old platform and the new one, and there's new opportunities, so whatever starts with Jakarta, we will know, okay, this is the new Jakarta E9 stuff. Okay, now, all tabs are Closed. If you have any questions, search for ATS AirHex uh, QA and just add, you know, the questions to here. And now I'm actually done uh, with my stuff. I hope there will be more interactions from the from you. So now ask me and whatever you like. And there's no questions, so I will take a break. So, and uh, if not, see you at AirHex Live December again. And this is like a whole day workshop. I will try to hack more on try. I will hack only. By the way, in September, there was a workshop with about architectures and I had 140 slides. So it was not slides, it was the contrary. So it was just concepts, but it was still fun. Uh, there was no code, just no concepts. So we had talk about different architectures and this is just code. Then um, there was the meetup uh, and uh, AI hacks. As you will see, you know, this show was here announced. And just the virtual booth and the next conference. Oh, by the way, if you would like to attend this conference, it's also uh, Jakarta E and, and web components related. Uh, there is a hidden uh, coupon code where you get free access to this conference. And uh, yeah, this is basically it. And there's the ATS AI hacks TV questions and answers. And I also will attend DevOps Ukraine. This year, it is also online conference. J Love and another one was asked. So, by the way, I attended the most conferences this year. It's incredible how much I talked already with zero traveling. So um, I had to actually have the most time spent in projects and uh, the most attendance at conferences because usually, you know, if you attend a conference, you have to travel and this costs a lot of time. And uh, this year, this was, everything was highly optimized, like this one, right? Actually, I was supposed to travel to uh, Florida. This J4K usually takes place in Florida. I would spend, you know, two days in an airplane. And now, uh, five minutes before the show, I connect and hope it will work. And now we are talking, right? So it's a nice experience, at least for the speaker. I can, uh, yeah. So uh, AHX Live and uh, AHX FM is the podcast with some new stuff in the pipeline. So I, I actually, the Pipeline is full. I have the problem. People are approaching me already with suggestions. So, uh, yeah, there's and uh, the popularity is uh, really <laughs> better than expected. And uh, AHX TV, any questions left? AHX TV is the first Monday of the month. And uh, Louis asked me something interesting. Uh, this one, and I think this is basically all. So uh, can you hack an example with GSF authentication with J JSON Web Token? I think it is impossible to do that or very hard. Um, 
actually not 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 that hard uh louis asked me now uh how you would use json web token with jsf right so how this may work because json web token looks a little works a little bit differently so what json web token does is that it, it is transported back and forth between the user interface and the backend and jsf already does it for you so there's nothing to transport but you will have to know to transport data to the backend and uh, what you what you can do is you can usually what uh, often happens this um, json web token is stored in a cookie so this uh, in open id connected even can happen as a default and it is stored as a cookie uh, on every request that json web to token is passed to the backend and then you should be able you know to access the principle because jsf is usually based on the servlet faces servlet and you should be able to inject the principle everywhere then you only you only will have to uh, activate the or activate uh, you will have to set up json web token you will need two things issue i think is mandatory and the public key and you will have to add the public key uh, to the micro profile configuration or you will have to point to an URL where the public key is downloaded and verified. The, the latter is, is better because all the open ID, open ID Connect providers have su such a kind of discovery U URL. So you can pull you know, the, the, uh, the information and just use it. And if you would like to play in with uh, JSON Web Tokens, I brought a small tool, it's really small. Uh, Jotanizer, and what uh, Jotanizer does is a command line tool. So if I launch it in a folder, uh, Jotanizer, Jotanizer, and just launch it. So it just created uh, a token, um, and also micro profile and uh, I and curl command with the token and a configuration. And in this configuration, what this tool does, I could say I'm uh, principal Adam and the groups are booth operator, <laughs> Eclipse booth virt virtual booth operator. And then we'll create, you know, recreate a token, and then the token is going to be passed that way. But authorization header is one way. The uh, the cookies is another way. And it's enough if you set it as a cookie. Just JSF should pass, you know, along this cookie back and forth, and then it should work. This is what I will try. There, there will be nothing to do. But you cannot just, you know, force JSF to pass uh, to, ex to extend the header. You could actually. I think there is JSF.js, a standardized. API to integrate with the backend, but cookie will be the easiest. Yeah. And from scratch right now, I cannot do this. Why not? I will have to install Keycloak to have the flow to get the token. And with that, I will have to, yeah, I, I will have somehow you now to inject the, the cookie to the to the page, which is not possible now. But recently I implemented the entire flow with OpenID Connect and it works well. Cool. Any other questions? No questions. Come on. Now the question to you, are you using Jakarta right now? Should I do a poll or you can just use the chat? Are you using Jakarta E? The first question, and then I will ask you, are you using MicroProfile? So, Jakarta E, anyone? I'm actually still using all the time Jakarta E, so all the projects. And um, MicroProfile as well. So, there's no distinction for me. All servers support actually MicroProfile. It's the great thing. All servers I know come with full MicroProfile support. So, uh, Whitefly was the last, which was hard to understand because uh, Whitefly. Um, Red Hat is behind Whitefly, and uh, they created Small Rye. So yeah, but now it's fixed. So if there are no questions, 
I would say, I would consider our session as done. So I will leave the booth. It also happens on conferences. Sometimes, you know, the booth is empty and um, happened to me. So I think we should you now behave like in the real world and just leave the booth and see you, you know, at the next air hacks. And at the next air hacks, I will probably you know also uh, show a little bit from the universe 2012, explain that. Just good idea to show you more um, extensive how to port an old application to a new Jakarta stuff. So I would say thank you. Good night to you.